Something new is on the menu. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select. This is the Disney's Muppets Swedish Chef action figure with accessories. <laughs> what you're not seeing in the beginning of this review is the multitude of accessories that come included with the Swedish Chef. We will, of course, look at all the accessories when we get this review started. bit of a empty studio right now. There's not a whole lot happening here other than the Swedish chef. I can assure you though that will change when we bring his accessories in. Before we do anything though, you know I'm all about giving you guys some dimensions. And the dimensions for the Swedish chef, you're looking at the figure standing 4.8 inches in height. He's a little smaller than maybe some of the larger figures that you may have in your collection. But like I said, he does make up for it with all the stuff he comes included with. Let's jump ship, jump over to Centimeter Town, and you're looking at a figure standing 12.2, about 12 and a half centimeters in height. Now, the figure certainly to say has accessories would be an understatement. I've done my best to try to group these by category, kind of food over here. Sorry, chicken. Some pots, some frying pans, and all their utensils. Don't worry, we'll cover off on all of them. We may be here a while. I feel ultimately when it comes down to putting all this stuff, storing it away, I'm going to have to almost be like a teacher at a school field trip, making sure I haven't left any kids behind <laughs> as I'm checking off my list. Let's go ahead and have a look at those right now. So he does have a few pots, boiling pots for things that he could cook like sauces. And oh, ideally, maybe you could even put one of the chickens into one of these. I don't think, by the way, this is Camilla. I feel like it's just a random Muppet uh, chicken. He certainly has had, during his cooking segments, many chickens visiting him, probably reluctantly and against their will, but yeah, he does come with one of the chickens. I'll just mention that now because one of them does fit, the only one technically, does fit in one of the kind of pots that he comes included with. And then from there, they go a little bit smaller and smaller still. So the actual pots are all done in what looks to be silver plastic. It doesn't actually look like they've been painted, rather instead molded in silver plastic. I guess maybe we'll also take a quick break uh, just to kind of quickly discuss the table that he also comes included with because I almost feel like as I will be going through each of the accessories onto the table, they will go. The table is small, uh, enough, I think, to accommodate all the accessories if you sort of resort to stacking them on top of one another. If you're somebody that likes a spread out kitchen of putting all your pots and pans across the table, you'll most definitely run out of space very, very quickly. The table done is all plastic and it's done in a brown plastic and they've also put a wood grain on the top there. So it does look nice, uh, but it does seem small for all the things that you're gonna be putting on top of it. Okay. So we already looked at one pot. We can put the pot over there. And then you have varying sizes of pots. They're basically the same idea, just a little bit longer, a little taller, a little shorter, and uh, you can all kind of stack those together. Uh, it also comes with uh, another pot. So I guess that technically would give us a tally count of four pots. And then he also comes with a little saucepan. Uh, like a, I don't know if you, you would call that... Uh, a boiler pot. Uh, it's certainly good for mixing, uh, you know, sauces and stuff like that. Or if you wanted to, you can also put the vegetables that we'll be having a look at in a second also into this pot. Little handle, and uh, you can also put that up on the table. See, right off the bat, I've already thought that I've organized this well enough, and I've already occupied half the table. Let's resume, shall we? It does also come with a larger frying pan. Good for stir fries, good for chickens too soon put them over there comes with a larger frying pan cast in what looks to be like a dark kind of gunmetal gray plastic 
and then it comes with also varying sizes of those as well. Two small sizes that almost seem identical to one another, except for this one here is a little bit bigger. And then you, he has a deeper frying pan to go along with that. So he has four frying pans. Are you keeping tally? Okay, good. Four, four pots, one kind of sauce pan, and then like four frying pans. We can add that to the mix. That table's almost already full. Then we can have a look at some of his cooking utensils. He has a salt shaker or seasoning shaker, which I was actually pleasantly surprised to find that is fully finished. I thought the bottom would have been hollow and simply just giving you the masked illusion that it was fully sculpted plastic, but they actually did finish it. That's a full realized uh, shaker. Whether it be again, seasoning salts or seasonings of some sort, something which he's gonna use to season generously across the food that he's cooking. We can put that over there as well. Uh, what else can we look at? Okay, well, one thing I would likely display the figure with is the rolling pin. I always just kind of picture him frantically waving around the rolling pin, trying to get some of the various fruits and various things he's looking to cook into the pot. They'll so probably likely display him with the rolling pin, but he does also come with things, strange things, like for example, the racket, a tennis racket uh, done here in brown plastic. You've got a little bit of the blue done there. And even like the meshing is done rather nicely in a gray plastic with little holes in between. You can even see the Swedish chef on the other side. He also comes with a mallet. He also comes with a cleaver. A really nice sharp cleaver. I'll probably display that maybe in his other hand. I'm thinking, for me at least, because that's the beauty of a figure like this, is there's so many customizable options. Likely display maybe with the rolling pin in one hand and the cleaver in the other. That's just me. While you're also at it, he also comes with a flipper. Um, I, I think it's actually a cooking surface for like things like pancakes, perhaps, crepes. I don't know. He does come with it, though, and it's done in black plastic with a brown handle. Put that to the side. Oh, there's still more. Swedish Chef also comes included with a wooden spoon. He also comes with included with a wooden fork. He comes included with a ladle. He comes included. I know we're still going. I feel like a infomercial here. And there's more. He comes also with a silver spoon. And he comes with two spatulas, silver spatulas, with slightly darker handles. That's actually the same for the ladle and the spoon. All of them have that darker handle on the end. And that pretty much sums up all of his equipment. Then we can look at the food items we've already discussed. Ugh, I feel bad calling him a food item, the chicken. The chicken comes included with the Swedish chef. I know we've already discussed it. I would love to see more than one of these, but uh, there's technically Camilla that would have come with uh, Gonzo, so you could have included that as well for your displaying purposes. Uh, I didn't quite know what these were. Giant walnuts, perhaps? And then I realized later, a Swedish chef should, of course, have Swedish meatballs. And I think these are giant, giant Swedish meatballs. On the inside, they're all hollow. Again, that led me to believe that they were walnuts, and they're not quite walnuts, you ridiculous man. Instead, they're actually, I think, Swedish meatballs, which again, you could put into the frying pan, you could put into the pot, whatever you feel is a good place to put those. And then he comes with a series of, this is the Muppets after all, so even things like uh, vegetables and food items all have faces to them. Sad onions. So sad are these little tiny onions. They're crying. They're probably crying because, after all, you cutting onions yourself. I'm, I bawl like a baby when I cut my onions. Uh, these little tiny onions are even little crying onions as well. You could put those also in the frying pan. Maybe that's also why they're crying. Uh, included as well are, I was certain that these were apples at one point. But I'm thinking to myself, if he is a chef, he's likely cooking more so with vegetables. We can dismiss this debate of whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. While the shape would lend itself to believe, or me to believe, that these are apples, I know the shape does look like an apple. I'm willing to think that they're more tomatoes, although they're very oblong tomatoes. Maybe they are apples, smiling apples for now. They won't be smiling much longer though. And then to go along with that, two carrots, two carrots right there. Mr. and Mrs. Carrot, if you will. 
they are of a different color, they seem like a different color. One is a little bit lighter than the other one here, or it's perhaps just my eyes playing tricks on me. And then the last thing he comes included with, eating up a good sufficient amount of time discussing all these accessories, I told you he does also come with a pair of gripping hands. So you can swap these out for the hands that are currently in his sockets. And that's all, this, all, that's all the stuff that comes included with the Swedish chef. Now, one thing I would love if they'd actually given you, like they did it for some of the other sets where they actually gave you like platforms. Uh, the two hecklers up, for example, up in the balcony, you got a full-sized diorama piece at the very least. Would loved if the Swedish chef could have come with like a floor bottom and even just like a cardboard insert on the back where you would have seen his full, uh, Statler and Waldorf, by the way, the full cardboard, you would have had at least a visible kitchen scene behind him, something that they could possibly have done with it. As for the figure itself, I don't know if you know this, just an FYI, and it's just between you and me, so I don't share this around with many people. Swedish Chef is one of my all-time favorite figures, favorite characters from the Muppets. Gonzo, Swedish, Swedish Chef. And uh, Bunsen Honeydew, actually, of some of my personal favorites. But Swedish Chef was always the one that, as soon as a segment was on the Muppet Show uh, that featured the Swedish Chef, I would quickly run, knocking over anybody in my immediate path, to the TV set where I would watch his segment and laugh hysterically. I loved the Swedish Chef. Swedish Chef here is well, well represented here in a plastic figure, slightly smaller, of course, than some of the other Muppets figures. I guess there are... He, Fonzie's a little bit taller than that. Uh, really, at the time that I'm doing this review, I don't quite know where I've stored my Muppets figures story of my life. Uh, so I can't do any comparisons for those, but I can certainly most definitely tell you that I've been an avid fan of the uh, Diamond Select releases that they've done thus far. Swedish Chef looks really good, actually. He does have a little bit of, sadly, some pink from his nose uh, dripping down onto his mustachio something which I could probably go in there maybe with a brown marker and very gingerly, quite gingerly, touch that up so I don't then ultimately have a brown on his nose. But he does have like a little bit of carryover from his nose onto his mustache. Other than that though, I'm looking at the generally quite clean, loving the plaid pants that they've given him, concealing well for the fact that he does have articulation. He does have moderate amounts of articulation, but it's nice that they conceal it, so it actually looks like it's a wrinkle draping over on his pants. Really nice done there. there there's the back, the tie-off of his apron, striped shirt alternating in the white and the blue. The shirt almost comes comes across, and I'm not sure why I'm seeing this as slightly more of a yellowish white. I think it's because the white on his apron is so much whiter that it, as a result of it, it kind of makes the stripes on the white come across a little bit more like an off yellowish white instead. The apron, if you are wondering, is not removable. It looks like what they have done is they've molded this part to the torso. And then they've attached the front of the apron by via either tabs or probably just likely glued this in place. And then this is a free piece as well. Uh, while this is free and something that you could easily probably pop off his head, off his neck if you took his head off, uh, I don't think you would be able to remove the apron. And even if you did, you probably would A, cause damage, B, be disappointed, and C, you would still have the back... Uh, roping there tied off with the knot on the back that would that would not change either way so I would not advise taking that off for the figure's articulation the head rotates all the way around if you are also wondering no the uh, actual chef's hat is not removable but the head rotates all the way around quite freely actually up and down and rock back and forth the arms are on what seems to be pin hinge joints, or possibly even a ball joint, if I can get a good a closer look at that. Kind of does look like it could be a ball joint sitting in the recessed sections of his torso. Uh, the arms move all the way around. He does have a bend at the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, and he also certainly does have a hinge back and forth on his hands. Uh, he does have a waist swivel. It does seem like there's something happening there on the back where you can rotate it, but it's just really stiff on this figure. Maybe looking at from the back would be the easiest to showcase the additional articulation. He does have more the conventional hinge joints where 
on the inside you've got like that cut right there when you move the legs outward. I guess it's functional and it works the best for a figure this size. So I'm not bothered by the fact that it's there. It does have the bend at the knee, which also allows that lower leg to rotate. His feet hinge up and down. They ankle rock back and forth. And I guess in some extent you can rotate them all the way around, but the back of the pant legs would certainly impede that, prevent that from happening. So a chef, I'm trying to think to myself again, well, like what else would I have included with the figure? From a standpoint of accessories, uh, he certainly doesn't need any more accessories than what he had come included with. Maybe at the least, at the very least, they probably could have included like the, like maybe just a cardboard backdrop that could have gone just behind the figure to showcase his kitchen. One of, of course, one of my all, all time favorite segments from The Muppet Show. And in what I may have considered initially as accessory overload, the idea that you'd never be able to display a figure with every single thing that we had to look at in this review somehow works well for Swedish Chef. Whenever I see his segments and I think Swedish Chef, I usually think his kitchen is in shambles and as a result of it, pots, pans, and everything else usually is spread across his table. And you can definitely replicate that look with all the things that Diamond Select included with this figure. Granted, yes, the table could have been a little bit bigger. If it was a little bit bigger, you would be able to spread out everything a little bit better but still, I think for what it ended up being, I think I'm very happy with this end release. Swedish Chef comes at every single thing you could possibly think of, shy of, of course, again, maybe like a backdrop picture. I guess I could probably even print off a picture, something I might consider doing to display behind the figure. Ironically enough, speaking of behind the figure, even in the packaging, it looks like Swedish Chef is cooking something outside, like he set up a little table at a barbecue. I just kind of find that funny. I guess, I don't know if that's supposed to be behind him, the surface of Kermit, or if that's supposed to be grass. Either way, though, I'm probably not going to be displaying him outside. I'm going to see if I can actually print off something nice, a replicating of his image that's behind him in the skits, and maybe see if I can put that behind the figure when I put him on display. I hope that Diamond Select continue to release these Muppet figures, an all-time joy of mine to be able to revisit figures like this, or visiting these figures as a way to revisit the original Muppets TV series that I used to watch every single week. If you managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below what you guys think of the new Swedish Chef from the folks over at Diamond Select. Or maybe perhaps if you didn't get a chance to pick this one up yet and you're kind of on the fence, Based on this review and this review alone, let me know what you guys think down below of The Swedish Chef. If you guys also want to go back and have a look at some of my other Diamond Select reviews, would you believe there's a playlist? That seems a strange thing to be prepared for. There is a playlist. You can check out all the other Diamond Select releases I've done up to this point, and all future videos will be also on that playlist as well. And while you're at it, if you're new to this channel, or let's even just say you're a long time viewer and just never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, swing on next door, and maybe see what uh, Fozzie Bear is doing in the next room. Uh, make sure you hit that bell notification so future videos are coming onto this channel. You'll never miss out. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.